Hey guys, welcome to the Canada Puck Podcast, your weekly recap of what's going on in the world of sports, specifically hockey, and even more specifically Canada. Maybe we talk about the USA today. I don't know. Don't hold me to that statement. It might just be Canadian teams. That's maybe all we talk about. I'm your co-host, Mick. You can find me on Twitter at Profit Mick, and I'm joined every episode with my lovely and talented co-host, Grant. On Twitter at Fourth Line Sports, you got really fucking serious with the second part of that intro. I was like, "Yeah, here we go," and then you're like, "No, wait, wait, it's time to get serious." Well, here. so I've noticed that as I looked at the video recordings, like you're well lit, like we can see your beautiful face, and if I sit back too far, I have this shadow. And I was at Canadian Tire yesterday, and I was looking at this little selfie light that I could put on top of my monitor, shine some light on my face, and I started thinking, "Why didn't I buy that?" Hmm. Buyer's remorse, not buyer's remorse. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the philosophical standing is on what if you don't buy it, if that's still buyer's remorse. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, notwithstanding, I don't know how we got a week into the postseason already, but here we are. And from what I've seen, it's kind of exciting. Albeit not as much as I would have liked to see, but from what I've seen, entertaining is probably the best word to describe it. And if I had to invent a word... Entercitement is how I would describe this week. Ooh. Oh, hold on. I got Webster on the phone here. Hello, Marion Marion Dictionary? Yeah, we have a new word. <laughs> Entercitement. Entercitement. Yeah, Miriam, whoever you are. Uh, Marion Webster. Oh, it's the same person. That's exciting. I thought that was like a different one. All right, there we go. Hmm. Hmm. But that was, like, this is an old lady then, because, like, whoever... This is yeah. a divorce lady. She, she still calls, somehow managed. She, I have to call her on the phone. Obviously, she's old. <laughs> Normally, you snap people these days. I think yeah. that's what kids are doing. Mm, you Something might be like showing that. your age a little bit. Snap? That's kind of old. We now... I don't know. I, I'm also old. I have no idea. We Discord each other. Oh, y'all want to slack it up? <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. Sweet. So if you're new, we're, we have some headlines we're going to run through. I guess we're just kind of broadly touch on all the series that are, the series that will be, spend a little bit more time with our Canadian brethren, FanDuel, gambling advice. Maybe we'll look at cards. Maybe we'll look at boobs. It's good times. What you're describing is basically the one thing that gets me out of bed on Saturday, and that is all of those things combined into one. Almost always one hour podcast. Sometimes we go a little over, sometimes it spills over, but mm-hmm. that's just because we're so excited. There's so much entercitement in our podcast that we can't contain ourselves. So, how do we want to do this? Do we want to start today and talk about the games that are going to be? Do you want to reflect, wax poetically, as it were, about last night, look ahead to Sunday, maybe start today? Because then we end with the Canadian team and then we can kind of jump back to last night, briefly touch on them. And talk about like Oilers Leafs from last night and then kind of look ahead to Sunday. Let's do it that way. All right. So if we start, this podcast will not be up in time. I apologize. But the Panthers Capitals 1 1. Game three goes today at 11 Pacific or 11, I guess, Mountain Time. It'd be like 10 Pacific, 1 Eastern. Caps, Penguins. Nope, that's wrong. Caps, Panthers. Uh, get some. You you stop short of the Greek time zone. I was you're running through mm-hmm. them all. I was like, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna get our Greek audience all right. Uh, by up. Greenwich Mean Times, that means it's eight, 8 p.m. Is that right? Uh, plus seven. Yeah, is it plus seven? Oh, it's plus seven for us. Plus... So it'd be like six p.m. Okay, six six right. p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Well, I'm more confused than ever, <laughs> but. Florida, Washington. Can't say I've actually tuned into a game. I was a little surprised that the Caps fended off uh, Florida in game one. Yep. Goaltending was a major concern for me. I think we mentioned this, yeah. Sam Snob being basically dog shit. Guess what? The Caps acknowledged that Cat uh, Ilya Samsonov is dog shit because they didn't even let him start game one. I don't think that he started game two either. Vitek Vanacek mm-hmm. is the goalie of choice. I don't know if that's going to serve them long term. But it paid off early with them able to split it in uh, the Sunshine State. All you got to do is win one road game for a chance to 
win a series. So they've already done that. They can get it done at home, home ice. We'll see. It's funny that, I mean, for all the ups and downs that the Capitals have had over the year, the fact that we can now look at this organization and be like, that is a playoff-hardened team. They can actually get it done in the postseason. They're now the obstacle that you have to overcome. Uh, it's been a long 15 years in Washington. One Stanley Cup to show for it, but I think they're showing that they are Warriors. Uh, it should be a good game for the most part, right? Uh, high scoring, if they yeah, they can kind of... Is it is it the Panthers series to lose more than likely, Rain? Yeah, and I think yeah, you touched on one of the big things in this series, and that is the difference in experience. And I know Florida does have a few older veteran pieces yeah. who can help lead them. However, this still is a young team with relatively no playoff experience. And even the capital shitty playoff experience is better than what the mm-hmm. Florida Panthers have. And like that's not to diminish what they did last year because I think they've made it to the second round. But, yeah, whole different level getting over this hump. We see it year after year with all these different teams. And that is young teams failing to make it over the hump. Colorado, Edmonton, whoever else you want to point to. The Capitals for the first, you know, 14 years under Alex Ovechkin. Uh, I don't know if this is Florida's series to lose anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Well, and yeah, a pivotal game. Game threes are very important. Um, so it should be a fun affair there. The Avalanche are absolutely just spanking the Predators. No chance. There's a reason they were like minus 600 series prices because Predators have no answer for the high-flying Avalanche. They are at a huge disadvantage not having UC Soros. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you tuned into or took a peek at the box score in game one. (laughs) David Riddich, eight saves, 13 shots. That's the last we saw of David Riddich. Since then, Connor Ingram, veteran of Mm -hmm. three NHL games and a... mm, I'm trying to be nice to the kid. Subpar... 87 something save percentage came in and has actually been a fucking outstanding goalie. 90, he stopped 30 or 32 on one night, and then what was it? I think it ended up being 79 of 83. So, like a 95% uh, save percentage through two games. Nashville's good at home. They, as mentioned, as alluded to, you don't really have to press panic until you lose on home ice. We'll see what kind of attitude that. The Preds bring into tonight's contest, but I'm not, I'm not as sold on the Colorado Avalanche running away with this as everybody else appears to be, and that's reflected in the betting prices. Mm, yeah, I can say that. I can say that. Mm. Well, Connor Ingram, if you ever needed a boost in the morning, I recommend Rockstar Pur- Pure Zero Fruit Punch. It's delicious. First time I had this today, mm, it has changed my life. So, is that a zero sugar one? Just yeah. to be curious, is that what you said? Yeah. I haven't. I don't know if my old ticker can handle uh, energy drinks yeah. much, these. But I will say the Rockstar Fruit Punch, outstanding. Yeah, you got. It sounds like you got the zero sugar one. It used to be a black and red can. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was like my go-to if yeah. I needed an energy drink. It was Rockstar Fruit Punch. I have another one of these in the fridge, and I've got two purple. So I'm hoping the purple lives up to the hype. Maybe try that one tomorrow. Mm, that was a good stop at the dollar store yesterday. Good job, me. Yeah, let's. But you know what? We don't give Mick enough credit around here. Thank you, Mick. <laughs> Wait, I have to know purple. Is it grape? Grape flavored? Well, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even look at the flavors till this morning. So I'm excited. Could be anything. Could be. What other purple flavors we got? Probably, probably grape. I was thinking, yeah, probably grape. Probably grape. Fruit punch grape. And here's the here's the kicker. That we're still fishing. Like we got no offers on the table, so. You know, this was all just gratuitous rock star talk. That's it. That's it. It could be anyone. Could, uh, monsters are really good. Those are the ones with the jokers on them. Mm, I love. I could love those for the right price. <laughs> I could love those. <laughs> Have you ever read in those conspiracy theories about monster cams? No. Oh, oh like the 333 is like the sign of the devil? Yeah, you got to talk to one of them religious fanatics because they'll get you pointed right with the monster drinks. You know, unless Monster wanted to just hypothetically... Oh, that's right, because the claw is like the Greek letter for like six or something, right? So it's like six, six, six. And yeah, I've seen that that religious guy go off with those cans. I've got nothing for this series. Uh, I don't think it's said and done. Uh, if you wanted to make a little money off the Preds in the next couple games, 
I think Grant was alluding to. <clears throat> Probably an opportunity to be had. Five o'clock, though. That is prime time hockey. That's when we start getting into thralls of it. Your afternoon chores are out of the way. What's left is those doldrums of the evening. Rangers, Penguins. What more could you ask for than Sidney Crosby in the postseason? Uh, how about a goalie to back him up? Hmm. Tristan Jari broke his foot, whatever, uh, about a month ago. Yeah, happens. Can't play. Right. Casey DeSmith, apparently he needed uh, some sort of surgery. Maybe hernia surgery. Something. Right. Something weird. Yeah, one of those weird ones. Shit. Louis Domingue, who I didn't even have a chance to look into how many games he's played this season. Louis Domingue is now the guy in that. He helped them to win in game one. In overtime, I think he came in. Mm. So, like, good for you, Louis. Louis, Domingue, I don't know what we call him. Anyways, help the, the Penn secure victory in overtime, coming in cold off the bench, and then pooped himself in game two. So I don't know what to expect from him. But apparently the key, he said he had spicy pork and noodles or spicy pork and rice. Like he had eaten this just, like it's fucking second overtime, Nick. The guy's been sitting a cold on a bench. He needs something to eat. Yeah. Spicy pork, gets it into his belly, Moments later, gets called, like, probably still has, like, Szechuan sauce all over his face. The, yes, the refs come and tap him on the shoulder, like, ah, you got to get in there, bud. He's like, oh, fuck. So he, hmm. maybe that's the key. Maybe it's just, like, getting Szechuan sauce on your face and, like, playing, like, ah, oh, God, my face is on fire. It burns. I don't know if you can do that for 60 minutes. Like, I could see an overtime period. Like, no problem. But 60 minutes on slush, like, it's going to sweat off. Oh, I see. You could reapply it during the intermissions. There you go. Yeah. I don't know, but anyways, I don't know. The betting market isn't as short on the as the Penguins as I, as I thought they would be, considering they're on to their third string goaltender. I know that I was just making the exact opposite argument with the Predators, but the difference is Domingue looked shit in Game Two. Hmm. Connor Ingram's been outstanding since he stepped between the pipes, so I don't know what what to expect for the Penguins. I have a soft spot in my heart for them and Sidney Crosby, but I'm not you know prognosis is not good. Yeah, I also don't think it's very good unless we see Domingue go and get some Golden China Szechuan sauce at your local vendor of fine products. Mm, Golden Dragon. If it's not Golden Dragon, it's basically crap. <laughs> oh, man, it's basically crap. It's basically huh. crap. It's it's right there in the logo. If you, Why aren't you buying it? Oh, shit. All right. Oh, God. That's... Huh. I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot. I worked night shifts all week. I watched like one and a half hockey games. Oh, I did watch like the Flames in 30. So I kind of think I saw a little bit of game two. At least the talking points of game two. Uh, as we move into our next series, Flames. Big D. Uh, big C versus Big D. You love to watch that. Usually on the internet. So what if it's on our TVs in our households with our families? Could you imagine? Little C versus D action, you always hit mute. That's my experience. Otherwise, right. you get busted. Yep, smart, smart, smart. Uh, looks like Flames had a pretty good dominant performance. Game one uh, fell flat. Just going to get going. Game two, do we see history repeat itself? The Flames bouncing back. I mean, we should also mention, I think most of these series were 1-1, one, one, right? Like, almost across the board outside of, I think, Preds were up? Maybe Hurricanes? But everyone else was tied 1-1, one, one, so kind of common narrative. Nothing to panic about. Uh, flames bounce back, no problem. Easy peasy. I would say, if you know you're gonna split the first two games, like just let's say inevitably, you have to decide you're splitting these games. Do you want to win game one or do you want to win game two? As the home team, my personal thoughts is I would rather rather win game two, kind of mm -hmm. like the Oilers did, as opposed because it feels like the, the Stars just have all the momentum now, especially after a 2 nothing win out of the best team in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. Sorry, second best team in the Western Conference. Analytically, the best team in the Western Conference. Now, all of a sudden, it's, you know, at least if I was a Flames player, I'm, I'm in my head a little bit more now. Like, all right, we didn't score in Game 2. Now we got to go on the road. we got to figure out this Jake Odinger without getting our lineup matchups. Mm -hmm. feels a little bit more daunting. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Calgary comes out flying and, and things just look great after game three. But three goals through two games, I would nothing would make me happier than us getting an 
a seven game series with eight goals scored. Like that's that's my life goal now. And so for the rest of the way, I will be rooting against the Battle of Alberta in round two in the sake of having eight goals in a seven game series. That's what I want. Yeah, that's that. That, that sounds it. I was going to throw together uh, kind of just a crazy parlay over of all the games. And I looked at the Calgary game and like it was on my ticket for maybe two seconds before I collected off. And I was like, who am I kidding? That's definitely an under. Easily an under. Yeah, see if they can get it going tonight. I don't know. I don't know. Is that is that? Do I, do I have to go out to a bar in Calgary to watch that? No, nah, I think that's maybe throw it on like a secondary TV at home. See what happens. The last thing you want to do, Mick, is go sit in a bar with some Fairweather fans shouting at the TV, and ninety percent of the audience not having a clue. Like that's a recipe for a fight. Those that's that's like fight. Nothing. You would just go there to throw it. Like, if you're looking for a fight, please take your own advice. Go to a bar. But I have a feeling you're going to overhear a conversation that's just not going to sit well with you. One yeah. thing's going to lead to a table getting broken over somebody's back. And lo and behold, I have to come bail you out of jail again. Yeah, I was working downtown this week and was there Thursday night, game two. And there was a couple green jerseys kicking around. Just saying. It was kind of strange. And then there was this couple that, like, were probably outside. There was, like, seven guys. They're all drunk hang on the C train station for like an hour and a half. I was very curious to like head over, go chat them up. I didn't, but you know. The one thing, like how do you, no judgment, this is really coming from a place of curiosity. How does one become a Dallas Stars fan? It's Dallas. So you're like football in God's country. That's it. I, so I, like I've heard, I've had one person in my life say that they really liked the Dallas Stars jerseys when they rebranded the bright, the bright green. They thought that was a great look, and they were going to get into that. Maybe that's that's how, right? Uh, yeah, or you're from Dallas. And speaking of jerseys, these Flames jerseys, these red and yellow um, monstrosities that they're rocking right now, like these throwbacks, god awful. Not the biggest Flames fan, but at least if you give me the, the red jerseys with the black shoulder pads and the black C's. Like, it looked strong. It looked kind of intimidating. These new ones look like saw... I don't know. I hate them. I, I absolutely hate them. I'm not the biggest jersey file, but, like, it's not a good look. I Every once in a while, we get treated to these, like, jersey rankings. I always get a kick out of them. Mm -hmm. uh, especially the heat, the heat of the pandemic when there was no sports to talk about. It's like, mm -hmm. yo, let's run through jerseys. Great idea. I don't know. Yeah, I, I can't even, to be honest, uh, both of those jerseys, and that is if a neon green and black jersey sucks you into a hockey team, you've done a lot of cocaine or meth in your life. Yeah. Because those jerseys are not a good look. Mm-mm. But, yeah, you know, if we're doing an opposite, or if this was a jersey bracket, I would hope neither team advanced into the second round because neither team really, in their current current threads, deserve a ton of credit. I've almost, and I've, I've heard a couple, I think it's like Crowfoot Liquor Stores tonight, they do give you a 15% discount on liquor on game days if you wear a Flames jersey into the stores. So I've often thought about getting, like, a cheap whatever the cheapest Flames jersey I could just for, like, the savings, eventually it pays for itself, right? Um, I've often thought of that strategy, and I was, like, looking at them, and I think now you can only find the red and yellows, and I really hate that. I was looking for more of, like, the vintage Black Seas, so, I don't know, maybe that's my new quest. Crowfoot Liquor will get you drunk enough for someone to find you attractive. Mm, three for three, baby, three for three. We're not, we don't pay for this podcast, but we're going to start making money off of it. Uh, all right, so that is Saturday's slate. I have some bets lined up for today's game. We have a fan duel. Do we want to pull a weird audible, get into better advice, fan duel, and then kind of bounce back to the other series? You know what? I think that's the shakeup our postseason needs because that basically runs us through tonight's action. Mm -hmm. And then we can go revisit. I like it. All, all right. right, let's do that. All right, cool. Uh, fan duel. Click that first, and then we'll come back for gambling. All right, last minute, Grant was like, throw together a fan duel lineup, you damn f sucker. And I was like, whoa, you can't talk to me that way. <laughs> you know who I am? Whoa, Grant, you're wearing a yellow t-shirt yeah. in the basement. <laughs> you can't use words like that. Sucker. All right. Uh, 
That's all I got. So I, I got one together. I threw one together. It was kind of fun. Uh, a little bit top-loaded. I found lots of good value, I thought, in uh, forward group. Uh, the NHL does have a DFS lineup. So should we want to find out what NHL.com is saying? NHL, DFS, player picks, projections, strategies for the upcoming content. All right. They even have a podcast you can listen to. So I wonder if theirs is better than ours. So Saturday, they're saying Michael Granlin for Nashville at center. Great pick. Wing, you should look at Andrew Cobb for the New York Rangers. Defenseman, they like Miro Hiskinen for Dallas. And goalies, there's no picks. <laughs> Come on, man. you got to at least round it out. And what? No, they're not better than us, Mick. Then, then, like, let's... We haven't even listened to it. We can't give them more credit than we've given ourselves over the last six years. That stings a little. All right. Well, I, I clicked on it earlier and saw that there was no goalie pick and laugh. So let's let's look. Do I give a goalie pick? I do have a goalie. Da-da! The most comprehensive DFL DFS advice on the internet right now. Oh That's us. God. I have one of those picks on my team. So. Oh shit. Uh, we might have to take Mikhail Granlund off our rosters then because. Crap. That's also who I have. Oh, I have the, I have another guy. Cool. Oh, All right. Okay, good. Okay, okay, okay. We're gonna sixty six percent of of what NHL dot com recommends, except for our goalies, which suck because they don't even say pick a goalie. They're only minus points tonight. Uh for myself, starting in net. By the way, I have Jakob Markstrom. I think he has a bounce back game. I think they get a win tonight. That's kind of how I play goalies. Just trying to go for a win. Seven eight hundred dollars. Uh, and then I kind of went bargain shopping. If we start at the top, we got Mika Sabinajad at 77. I've got his friend, Arteri Panarin, $7,600. Uh, Elias Lindholm, $7,400. He might be the goal scorer tonight in Dallas. Andrew Kopp, that's the guy NHL.com was talking about. $5,800, not terrible. Uh, Mike Matheson for the Penguins. And uh, Matthias Ekholm, $5,42 and $4,700 respectively. I got Jamie Benn. The man, the myth, the legend, the high flyer, the 69 train himself, $4,600. And Tyler Toffoli, $5,500 to round out the pairing. Now, he's quiet down a little bit. He did have a long postseason last year, so I don't know if he's just getting tired, if it's just the Flames system, uh, if it's just Dallas's defensive style. But I think we see maybe some Flames light it up today. Lindholm, Toffoli, did the man's. <sighs> So that unfortunately we do have some overlap and it's not a good look for our Temi Panarin. I've been high on this guy for the last half of the season, including him on a near weekly basis or at least giving him some consideration. He's also on my roster. For some reason I have 7,600 though. Maybe it's the type of tournament that we entered. Mm. Nevertheless, uh, starting up front, Sidney Crosby. The Penguins, this feels like it's one of those spots where the Penguins need a strong outing offensively to compensate mm-hmm. for their goaltending or at least play with some structure and I expect Crosby to, Crosby to lead them in that regard. He's joined by Brian Rust, okay. who is Crosby's trigger man this year. 7,500. I figured, yes, I can do that. Our right, Timmy Panarin's the other winger. Mikhail Backlund is the other center I skipped over. 4,200. For some reason, the Flames role players... Kind of as Mick was mentioning, the top line has been bottled up, and you, that's we talked about this at the end of the season. You need to bottle up the team's top line because they drive scoring. Could it be one nothing? Absolutely. Could Mikhail Backlund be the guy who scores that? Probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, defensively, I'm not proud of you know this this dichotomy of my defenseman probably best illustrates how I approach the schedule, and that is. Top end with bottom end. I have Roman Josie for 7,800. He is paired with Jeremy Lausanne, who is also a National Predators defenseman for the 98% of people who don't know that. 3,500. Hmm. Lausanne, if you can get a few blocks, maybe a miracle assist. Maybe he just like somebody shoots the puck off of him as he's skating off the ice and he gets an assist. That's really best case scenario for Jeremy Lausanne tonight. Uh, on the back end, utility source, sorry, on the in utility spots, Luke Glendening plays second line minutes, more of a shutdown checking role type position, but he'll get you a few hits, hopefully a few shots today. He's been held shotless through the first two, but I'm confident Luke Glendening's going to throw his body around for a few fantasy points. Mikhail Granland, as mentioned, I wanted somebody from the Predators because I do like their their ceiling today. I had Duchesne, but I ended up having I had too many Predators because there was on wasn't any other $3,500 defenseman. And 
My favorite goalie of the last two games, Connor Ingram, as mentioned, 95% save percentage over the last couple games. I like Nashville at home. I'm probably going to regret this because I've just endorsed them too much at this point. Mm-hmm. Like the bets, the um, the fantasy lineup, the you know basically tugging Connor Ingram off on the podcast for the last half an hour. I'm going to regret it, but he's my goalie for now. I was telling Mick right before we hit record, you know, I tried my best. It hasn't been good this year, but I tried my best. I put my best foot forward today. I don't maybe take with what I said uh, with a grain of salt, except for the goalie advice, because God damn it, for the, if anything else, just include a goalie. You're in a better position DFS-wise. As much as we love NHL.com, go there for all your hockey needs. We do think that goalies help you win FanDuel lineups. That's maybe the advice we give over them, and we'll, I think we'll stick by it. So, That's it. and Luke Gelding, mm. sounds like a hot pickup on defense. So, even if you're his balls chopped off, Mick, it's Glenn Denning. <laughs> oh, Glenn Denning. That's awkward. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, cool. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, if we both lose horribly, maybe we never do this segment again in the playoffs. We'll find out. So. I think I'm in a 50-50, so really I just have to be better than five other guys, and I make a dollar, so. That's, you, you string enough of those dollars together, next thing you know, you're finding yourself at a fine establishment eating a roast beef sandwich on, in front row, so. Oh my goodness, that you're, sounds. You're not far off. Sounds delightful. Uh, jump from here back to, I guess, better advice. So, gambling, we gave some series prices, we gave some... Do you want to get like game ones? Uh, I don't have anything decided. I have all series prices. One parlay from last week. Uh, I've got three plays for today based on tonight's affairs. And I guess one for tomorrow. I have I have three, but maybe I'll do four. And it's not the parlay that you're expecting. Maybe. If tomorrow's games are on the table, I might have something. Why don't you go ahead and lead off here with one and then I'll... I'll talk myself into one of these other ones. All right, so I'm going to start off. Calgary Flames. I like them bounce back. I like them winning. I think the better team has, right now, historically, won game three. That's a lie, because the Bruins, for some reason, won last game three. Uh, I don't think they're dead. Minus 175. Heavy price. Don't love it. Put $40 on there. I'm only returning, like, 62 bucks. It's not great, but sometimes you need layups. Layups win basketball games. So I'm going to go Flames. Wow, really going against the grain. I thought three pointers won basketball games in 2022. Is that not why everybody's playing mm. Steph Curry type basketball? Mm. Yeah, I think that's okay, that makes sense, huh? Man, my my game at the out on the playground sucks right now. All it is just layups. I, I want the iron. Next time we play basketball, I'm, the ironic high socks, the headband. I feel like that's in our cards. That's probably where we're at in our lives right now. I think so. Yeah, metaphorically, anyways. All right, I adjusted things. Two picks today, two two picks tomorrow. Nice. Uh, maybe I've I've teased you a little bit with some of my thoughts on the New York Ranger versus Pittsburgh Penguins. The total is set at six, and the over is the under is juiced. And I get mm. that this is a reflection of the Penguins needing to tighten things up because they have no chance of winning unless basically. Unless they shut down the Rangers' offense, I just don't trust Louis, 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 Louis Domingue. We'll just call him Domingue. Hot sauce. Oh, oh, big D. Yeah. Hot Szechuan. Szechuan. <laughs> Szechuan. Szechuan D. All right. Spicy D. Oh yeah, there we go. Spicy D. We, we got there. It. We got there. Yeah. Spicy D. Um, God bless his soul. Don't know if I like his uh, ceiling tonight against Rangers' offense that has just been mm, prolific. Mm-hmm. We've seen the Pens be able to keep pace, too, especially on home ice. They do some good things. Over 6, minus 105 is the stance that I'm taking. This is the hill that I'm dying on for $25 today. Sweet. I also liked the overs. I might have just been scraping the bottom of the barrel. I have a three-team over parlay. I like over six goals with the Rangers. I like over six goals in Colorado. And I like over six and a half. Sorry, six and a half Colorado, six and a half in Washington. Probably those all together. Plus 580. I'm going to put $10 on my plus 580 parlay. I like that. I think that we've been seeing some offenses roam freely, so not a bad strategy. 
Uh, I'm not hiding my feelings on this one. I haven't hid my feelings on this one. I like the Predators tonight. Plus 188 on home ice. I was thinking about taking them just mm-hmm. plus one and a half, but it seems a little more reckless to do it that way. So I'm just going to take them outright to win. Plus 180, $25 to win 47. They finish the season. Go ahead. No, go, 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 finish your thought. I was just going to add. They finish the season third fewest high danger chances, um, which means sh- reflective of their ability mm-hmm. to shut things down in their own end. So. Mm, I think Colorado is going to have a little hard time scoring today. Yeah, I like where your head's at at that play. I was also looking at that line. Uh, however, I noticed the Capitals were like plus 165 and the Preds were like plus 185. And I just, I don't know, the fact that the Avalanche have looked like such a superior team to say the Pip, the Panthers have had those stumbling blocks at this point. I just didn't like that both those games were so close in price, both being on home ice, underdogs. I don't know, the value didn't quite seem right to me, so I stayed away from both those games. But I do like both of the... Like, if you put money on the Capitals and Predators today, I bet you you have some money extra in your pocket at the end of the night, right? Uh, Like, both those plays, but it's just... I don't know. Something seemed suspect there, you know? I know, and it sounds like... I. I'm glad you said that because it sounds like kind of a square way to look at things, but I do that every day. I was like, how do these odds kind of fit together? Yeah. I'm not going to look at, you know, three home underdogs and be like, oh, they're all going to win. I'm like, ah, which one of these is going to win? So I kind of take the same approach. Like, variance. Like, if it was, like, plus 150 for Caps, like, plus 250 for Preds, I'd be like, yeah, that total makes sense. But the fact they were, like, pennies away kind of thing, like, 165, 185, I was like, I don't know. I didn't didn't buy it. But it's my interesting note. I got one more play. It's for tomorrow. And I think it's my biggest bet of the day play correctly i guess we'd introduce the segments but we take 100 theoretical dollars we gamble it every single week and we win you money or you just watch us lose money one of those two happens so uh starting last week this is, i guess our first official postseason play like i said i got one left i'm gonna emotionally hedge taking the cap that sorry tampa bay lightning minus 120 50 bucks go bolts I don't know why I didn't see that coming. Stupid me. How long have we been doing this shit? And I still couldn't picture yeah. the emotional hedge. But for the sake of continuity, I cut my plays down to three. So okay. I'm going big on $150 play tomorrow too. I have been burned by this time and time and time again. Time and time. And time. Yeah, three times. Three times I've been burned by All this right. make is what I'm trying to illustrate. Minnesota and St. Louis. Mm. On paper, this is a series that should be going to overtime. Six overtimes basically on a nightly basis. It has not gotten there yet. I'm not abandoning my strategy now. This is basically the last time I can make this bet and still be in a somewhat respectable position at the end. I am taking Minnesota Wild and St. Louis Blues to go to overtime at plus $320, $50 to win $160. Whatever the case may be, I just... like I I just don't get how this game hasn't gone... This series hasn't gone overtime Mm -hmm. yet. It doesn't make sense to me. All right, all right, I like that. Yeah, it seems... I, I haven't watched any of it. Close? Sure, why not? Why not, Pop? But that's it. That's our advice. You know, our fantasy takes. You know, our gambling takes. You know what my dog looks like. Look at him right there. Stupid dog. Uh, what's going on, buddy? Uh, yeah, so other than that, last night's affair. Let's, let's look back. Let's look back at the night that was recap those and look ahead to tomorrow i guess ever so slightly so bruins carolina uh bruins pulled one out how did they uh win last name i wish that i could tell you i have no clue how this team managed to do what they did Mm -hmm. the hurricanes i just i like the hurricanes i like what the hurricanes bring i wish i had a better perspective on this one but mm, boston they got back into it. We'll see if they can carry that momentum in game four. Uh, they were showing some highlights during the breaks in the Leafs games that I was watching, but I kind of got carried away with a couple, I don't know, a couple rock and playlists on Spotify, cracked a couple beers, was having a party, didn't listen to intermission. So don't know what to tell you. Spotify, where your dreams come to life. <laughs> oh, my <I> actually, God. <laughs> I don't know what Spotify is. <laughs> But, it's like a music playing app. Uh, it's a subscription service. You can play a bunch. Uh, you, there's lots of great services from, I don't know if they have audiobooks, but they might have some type of audiobooks. There's tons of podcasts. Like you can find Canada Puck 
on Spotify. Uh, and then they've got an assortment of music. So, and you can share playlists. Like I can make a playlist, send it to you mixtape style. Shoot. You yeah. know what? Could you imagine the Canada Puck Pod Puck Puck Podcast mixtape? It would basically just be the Misfits <laughs> Saturday night going back and forth <laughs> for about six hours. That, that might be your Saturday night. It's just listening to the Misfits on replay. And there's uh, about six people in the world who will get that joke. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a rough one. Good thing we were some drunk. Good thing we were some drunk. Uh, let's jump ahead to the other talked about series before we dive into the meat and potatoes. Uh, Wild five. One over the Blues, commanding 2-1 lead in St. Louis. Maybe going to overtime tomorrow night. But other than a stumble, I guess, in Game 1, the Wild look like they've kind of steadied the ship, have been the better team. What we were expecting, right? D-Wild are, without question, the better team, mm-hmm. and we are seeing that kind of in spades. That being said, the Blues on home ice, This is I could see them pulling level before we head back to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this series is getting enough credit for the excitement that it's bringing because it has been entertaining, enter- exciting, I would say. Um, Mark Andre Fleury with the Minnesota Wild system in front of him has been great. I'm excited to see Colorado and Minnesota next round, and I'm more excited to see Minnesota go to the conference finals because I actually think that they are yeah. the team to beat on that half of the bracket. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Now, 5-1. Looking at a box score, it's hard to sit here <clears throat> knowing very little about a series and tell you about it because a 5-2 Maple Leafs victory looks dominating. It was a lot closer than it was. I don't know if that's the case in Minnesota. I'm guessing they went up early. They stayed up. It looked probably one-sided. I don't know if that's the case. Yeah, I didn't pass watch it, but I knew that they did get themselves an early lead and they yeah. carried that through the rest of the game. So, All right. Yeah, but it's like right. a... Emotionally, as I was watching, like scores at both, I think at like two nothing or something. You could have got some like one of those stupid prices where I was like, if I bet my whole bankroll, I make thirty dollars right now, and I was like, what are the odds the Blues come back? Hmm. <laughs> Didn't those times, but like you know, you get those thoughts once in a while, and you're like, like I could just like take everything I own and make twenty dollars. Is that a good idea? I love seeing those tweets on the internet because it always makes me feel like you know what, compulsive gamblers like you and me. We're not alone out there. Nope, nope. There's a there's a few of us. Few of us. Speaking of another five, something lower score affair. Uh, Toronto went ahead. They uh, they outplayed Tampa Bay to go up two one. They only need two more wins this postseason to get further than they have been in eighteen years. Can they do it? Hmm. I do think that they do do it. I do think, yeah, that's a lot of doo doos. Yeah, but yeah. it's. I hate that I'm saying this. You can go basically anywhere in Canada, and you can get an opinion on the Leafs and how good they've been, and yada 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 yada, what they need, what they're doing, blah. I have been most impressed with with the actually the fans, and it pains me to say that because Toronto has a reputation for just being a shit arena, and you can in the regular season it is 100 percent a truth. You can watch until about halfway through the second period before players start to show up, or sorry, fans start to show up in the stands, and the lower bowl is empty. Mm-hmm. That hasn't been the case. The place has been rocking. Like, I would say it was more electric in Toronto in game one than it was in Edmonton. Uh, I don't know about game two, but I, I do, like, I was taken aback at the difference in the buildings because mm-hmm. Toronto seemed to have a leg up in Edmonton in that respect. So, you know, as as hard of a time as we give the Leafs for everything they are and everything they want to be, and they deserve every ounce of that hate. Mm-hmm. They got some, you know, they earned some respect with their their building noise and game. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I wasn't uh, so high. Although I've heard lots of things. Again, didn't watch the two affairs. Uh, so basically, everyone was kind of saying the Leafs looked like they played the Lightning right. Uh, both games, they had some unlucky bounces in game two. Uh, looked like they, well. As for last night's game, I feel like the referees had a very strong influence on that affair. Uh, tons of power plays, uh, tons of dumb penalties, and I don't know if that was just the Lightning kind of getting pressure on like those third and fourth lines, right? Lots of those guys were kind of making mistakes. They were playing physical. The Leafs were kind of 
not diving, but playing less physical back. They kind of played uh, a little bit more finesse. Uh, they weren't kind of diving down to the Lightning's style, and it seemed like it worked, right? Uh, their power play, or their penalty kill, sorry, uh, excellent. Right, like between, I think it was uh, Mikheyev, Marner, and Kerfoot, they took something like 40 seconds off one of their power plays in offensive zone possession for the Leafs, which is pretty impressive, right, for like those couple guys to do. Uh, they looked good to there. Uh, the fact that we can talk about depth players, I think, is maybe the difference maker for this Leafs team right now. The fact that we could sit here and we could talk talk about the Labushkins, the Mikheyevs, the Engvalls play. Right, we're talking about the Spezzas, the Cliffords, the Simmons, and we're not talking about just the like the Tavares and the Marners and the Matthews. Might be the difference this year with this team and the fact that they're a hockey team. Right, they're a deep team. They have lots of contributors throughout the lineups. Uh, it's not just one dimensional. Might be the difference this year compared to those last couple of years. Right, where we're not just pointing the fingers at the big guys. Uh, although you get some of that because it's the Maple Leafs and their fans are just horrendous and horseshit. But I think that might be a good sign of things to come. Uh, however, I do think it's going to be a lot closer. So uh, if you have plans and your mother likes the Maple Leafs, maybe get her far away from a TV tomorrow night, take her somewhere nice, because I don't think she's in for a good uh, a, a good evening. No, definitely a table-flipping experience yeah. is what I would say. I just have to touch on something because you brought uh, one thing up that kind of made me two tangents the officiating the officiating has been a little suspect mm -hmm. in this um leafs bolt series whole shitload of power plays in game one whole shitload of power plays in game two i don't know we'll see if the standards changes because mm -hmm. this has been a very tight standard and typically in the playoffs we're more accustomed to a looser standard the downstream effect of that as noted this power penalty kill story is just fucking outstanding. Mm -hmm. I don't know, on in game one, five-minute uh, major in the first period, whoever it was. Um, Clifford? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say the unfortunate-looking one. Yeah. Kyle Clifford. Yeah. Three on-man rushes, and they outchanced the Lightnings on a pe power play um, for five minutes. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I, yeah, Toronto's in a good spot. I don't want to jinx anything, so I'm not going to share too much, but I like where the Leafs are at this year, and they can make a deep run. Mm -hmm. and, and like and, and any of these series, you win a game on the road, well, I guess you have home ice advantage, right? So, like, if you're if you're the kind of the better team, right, that's the importance of being kind of higher in the standings, right? So, I mean, you win two games at Toronto, it's over, right? Regardless of kind of the rest of the results for Tampa. So, Tampa stumbles one more, then you've kind of almost got them in that uh, foot-on-the-throat position, right? So... I wish we had a story or an analogy that we could use instead of foot on the throat. Like, you just got to go, sw it's like swimming with Mick. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you had held me out under and, you know, we had to go to a hospital or something like that. Or like, you know, baseball with Grant at the time, I, you know, unmercifully beat you with a bat. I wish we had something like that that we could use in a, as an analogy, so. Yeah, we never almost killed each other. It's so so unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Which is actually, you know what? Considering our like our our past our tr track record and like some of the things we've done in the past, it's pretty impressive that we never almost killed each other. Well, it's good for us. Yeah, it's the opposite of having your foot on the throat. Yeah, on each other's throat. Yeah. We've, it's like, it's like, we've we've done lots of coddling. You know, lots of like like this. Like, it'll be yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I yeah, the Leafs look good. I'm I got nothing else to say about that one. Yeah. Uh, Oilers, Kings, Poof. man, Kings suck, don't they? The Jonathan, the Kings came out after game one. I will not lie to you. I was nervous. I was thinking this is exactly what I was expecting Yeah. because the Kings outplayed the Oilers substantially. And I know, oh, great, it was 3-3. It was only the blunder that cost the Mike Smith puck mm -hmm. handling blunder that cost the Oilers a win. No, Edmonton was outplayed basically from start to finish in game one. Two of their three goals came on the power play, which is exactly their issue. You cannot give the... Like, for Edmonton to be successful, they need to get 5-on-5 five -five scoring. And they didn't get that in game one. Well, what a difference two games makes because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, their offense, 14 goals over the last two games, some of which mm -hmm. came on the power play. They're doing all right. Edmonton's looking okay. Yeah, no, uh, much better performance last night. I watched a little bit until it was like 3 nothing, And I was like, hmm, I really can't see the Kings scoring more than three goals. 
right? So it's one of those, like, at 3 nothing. I, I was confident enough to be like, you got this. Good job, Oilers. They kept rocking. They kept rolling. Uh, Vander Kane with a hat trick. So, hats off. I wish we... Uh, uh, something like that. The, the biggest issue, if we're looking ahead... Can the Oilers re-sign Evander Kane? I know that this isn't going to be the focus from now to the end of the season, whenever that may be, but we're seeing how different the Oilers' offense is with mm-hmm. Kane and having that goal-scoring, power-forward presence. They adopted this with Zach Cassian, yeah. and Zach Cassian was the goal-scoring power-forward for a couple of years, but now to see them with like an actual legitimate power-forward who can score... It puts them their offense on another level, and it makes them that harder to compete with. Now you have like three legitimate top line scorers between Drysaitel, um, McDavid, and Kane. And even last night, we, even in Game One, we saw the role players step up. Nugent Hopkins is, I think, he had a three point night last night. Derek Ryan, who doesn't get his, you know, not a big output guy, but still a big contributor, has looked good. So. I think that having this big body presence just lets this team play a better game. And I think that gives them the advantage in the, the rest of the way here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's a it's kind of well-balanced, right? Like their lineup top to bottom. I was doing that thing where I was thinking, I don't know if you ever watched those like daytime TSN talk shows, but some of those tools and like some of the stuff on the panels and like my best take was, I was like, dry sidle, Hyman. I really like that line. <laughs> like really really like that line yeah it's it's a good line there so overdrive if you ever need content i can give it to you because like that's like a 20 minute segment right there right just lots of like head nodding and jerking each other off mm. if there's one thing we do well it's jerking each other off oh don't forget about the head nodding we can head nod with the best of them uh yeah i don't i can't my my screen won't move over. I'm on cap friendly, and I can't I can't look over for some reason. Like it's like minimized and shrunk, so I can get it in the pot. I, I can't see what their cap situation looks like going forward. Uh, I don't know if signing Evander Kane, uh, Evander Kane, who's in <sighs> bankruptcy hell. I don't know. Can he ask for a lot of money at this point in this time, or is he just happy with like anything? Like, you give him like two million bucks a season, he's like, I'm happy. I'm happy right now. <sighs> that's I mean most people would ask for a little bit more than two million dollars to live in Edmonton eight mm. months of the year they they're not in a great position cap wise let's see here uh, 39.7 million tied up in forwards 24.2 in defensemen um, I guess the silver lining Miko Koskinen is off the books next year yep that's four and a half million dollars you can save so uh you know, maybe they are in a position next year. Uh, cap hit statistics, they got about uh, $10 million, $10, $11 million to spend next year. Yeah, they'll be all right. That's done. Yeah, that'll be fine. Maybe they can't make it happen. I mean, if, but, yeah. How, how old's Kane? 30? Uh, okay. Like a two-year deal. If he could leg it out, maybe get paid till he's like 35 or something. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see yeah. how it all shakes out. But the focus remains: how do they? Can they go back to Edmonton with a three-one series lead? And if Game Three was any indication, yes, they can. This yeah. is another game that I've kind of in the back of my mind. I'm starting to think about. You know what? Maybe maybe overtime's the way to play because we're we're going to see a more uh, cohesive defensive effort from the Kings tomorrow night. We saw what they could do in Game One. There's no reason to suggest that they can't get they back can. to that. But I mean. Killing all the momentum of uh, getting outscored 14-2 in one game is a tough, you know, tough hill to climb. So we'll see long term, or we'll see tomorrow night. I think it's tomorrow night. This one, we'll see tomorrow night if LA can kind of bounce back. But maybe overtime. But big advantage, Edmonton. There you go. Uh, yeah, I think aren't they regular day for this first round? I think so. I think they have it nice and clean. Looks like so. In theory, we'd have like game six on Thursday. Game. Five, what, Tuesday, Sunday. There you go. So just kind of rolls through. No problemo. Maybe it switches up at some point, probably after this round. <clears throat> Especially as, like, things start getting staggered, right? Like, teams get eliminated. We have to watch the Game 7s go out. Go from there. Yep. Cool. Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, so that is everything. Yeah? 
That was everything. That is everything. Look at us. Hmm. Good for us. Yeah. Good job. One recording. We didn't have to stop halfway through. Yay. Watch until I accidentally close this. And I got to say, this is probably the most fun I've had recording a podcast this year. So nice. uh, leave it to me to just ruin this. And we'll have to record some crappy episode to, to fill the, the hour that we promised. Well, this everything. is like, this is almost like we've talked about what to do in the future of the show. And like, oh, there we go. Look at that. One nothing for Panthers. Five minutes into the game. Hmm. Well, if they didn't bet too much money on the Capitals. Uh, but, like, a Sunday morning hangover. Or we can sit here and we can bitch and complain that our teams and our bets and we lost last night. We just feel terrible and we just need to, like, vent to get all that negative energy out of our bodies. So this is, like, pretty prime. Pretty ideal. So both our teams won. So really not much to complain about. We can just look ahead to the future and lament that pain is coming at some point. The inevitable hammer. Mm. Yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad. Uh, do we want to do anything else today? Hmm. If we're if we're not doing cards, I can I can rip through here. Uh, I mean, we know we know how we end every every segment. Yeah. So if you want, we can just cut her cut her ten minutes short, and maybe this is the the hangover cure that we need go and get some more liquor into our bellies that's it I, there's a weird smell dog ran upstairs my smell of weird smell i don't know what happened up there I'm not not looking forward to going upstairs i might just hang out in the basement the rest of the day i don't want to deal with that so well the canada puck podcast would not be the canada puck podcast mm -hmm. without our babe of the week we're going down to the south mick was that southern maybe it was more forrest gump hey Calgary is going to Big D tonight, so why don't you show us? Get our D's big. That's a weird <laughs> thing to say, but all right, whatever. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Overselling it. Here yeah. we go. Miss Kentucky. I don't think she's actually Miss Kentucky, but she's from Kentucky. This is a classy one. Lydia underscore Kirkland underscore. So L-Y-D-I-A underscore Kirkland. Like the Costco brand where you can get all your shopping needs done in one 45-hour trip. That's, Kirkland. That's so convenient. Don't forget, don't forget the underscore at the end of Kirkland. Yep, yep. This lady is just everything that's all right with the world. You got to go a little further down to get some of the, you know, typical Canada Puck podcast material, the mm -hmm. material you've come to expect from Canada Puck mm -hmm. podcast. But nevertheless, this lady... If this is what Kentucky has to bring to the table, then by golly, I'm going to Kentucky. Nice. Or maybe that's Georgian. Lydia Kirkland, you are our babe of the week. Showing. Showing. Yeah, look at that. Oh, she likes basketball, of course. Oh, she shoots. Terrible form, though. <laughs> she shoots and Mick scores. Because she's definitely not with that shot. Fucking horse shit. Come on. Use your legs. What is that arching your back? What's wrong with you? If you can't tell, Vic's passionate about basketball shooting. Oh, especially those little games. Do you remember how well I did at that one game at that trampoline place? Like, I played till the point where I got bored, and they kept giving me bonus time. We had like I had to wait 50 seconds for the game to be over because I had so many points. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? That's probably the best best example we could like, give. Has sure anyone played for a dollar? Played that game and got bored and walked away? Because like that's how I play those games. So. Yeah, you're a cheat code in uh, basketball arcades. There's well, no you just use your arms, and then you don't have to shoot as far. <laughs> That's the nice thing about Chuck E. Cheese. You know, as you get older, the games stay the same oh, yeah. size. 100%. Like, watching like just football, you just kind of pass it. It's just like this. <laughs> I've never done that before. That's kind of a cool effect. There's my hand. All right. Well, as always, this was fun. Can't wait to do it again next week. Mm, hopefully we're uh, still positive and fun things to talk about. No guarantee being the Leafs or Oilers fan, but the playoffs have been interciting, and I'm oh, so yeah. excited, interciting to see more of it. So. Mm. And I love not shaving it for McDavid, <laughs> throwing it for Goudreau. Mm. Here we go. All right, all right, Mick. Well, we wouldn't. What's our typical sign off? We will see. Nope. Party on, Mick. Party on, Grant. See everybody next week.